In October 1, 2021, Seinfeld was released on Netflix. It is a sitcom that ran from 1989 to 1998. It's one of the classic sitcoms out there, if not the one that defined the sitcom genre. Jerry Seinfeld, the star of the sitcom, decided that out of nowhere to make an animated film. As a kid, I really loved this film. It's called The Bee Movie. <laughs> My mom and I was growing around the market, looking through a bunch of pirated DVDs. Something caught my eye. A disc, which was labeled 28 movies in one. It had Over the Hedge, Spongebob Atlantis Square Pantis, and the B-Movie. I just had to buy it. I watched the hell out of these films, especially the B-Movie. Fast forward to 2016, 15-year-old me logged into the internet, and I was greeted with... my childhood. I was so confused why people would make fun of this film because I didn't remember anything that was necessarily bad about it. But as more memes appeared online, I slowly realized the many, many red flags I didn't see as a kid. I mean, what's this movie about anyway? Like, it can't be that bad, right? The film starts with a narration about how bees shouldn't be able to fly because they're too fat. We're greeted with Barry Benson, the main protagonist of the film who is preparing to go to his graduation with his friend Adam after spending one week in school. Yeah, three days of grade school, three days of high school. They go to the graduation, they're given a tour through the jobs in the hive, and Barry realizes he has to work one job for the rest of his life until he dies. You'll stay in the job that you pick for the rest of your life. What? After the graduation, Barry and Adam meet Paul and Jocks, bees who collect pollen from flowers outside the hive. They offer him to go outside the hive if he was B enough. We're going 0900 at J-Gate. Whoa. What do you think, buzzy boy? Are you B enough? I might be. It all depends on what 0900 means. So he goes with them the next day. Whoa. I'm out. They get separated and he ends up in the home of Vanessa. Okay, here we go. Vanessa's boyfriend, Ken, tries to kill Barry. Vanessa saves him and Barry gets all googly-eyed for Vanessa. And he decides to thank her for saving his life even though it's a B law to not talk to humans. He decides to do it anyway. You like jazz? Vanessa gets all shook that a bee is talking to her. But meh, they decide to share a coffee later. Barry goes back to the hive. Adam realizes that he talked to a real human girl and tells him to start thinking B. You have got to start thinking B, my friend. Thinking B. 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 Barry's parents urges him to get a job instead of lazying around. Barry daydreams something about Vanessa, which turned all nightmarish and almost drowns in honey. Barry ignores his parents and goes back outside the hive to go with Vanessa to the store and realizes that humans have been stealing honey. He decides to go and follow where all the honey is being taken and sees that it's being taken by humans in a honey farm. And after this, he decides to sue the human race. I'm helping him sue the human race. What? With the help of Vanessa, they sent the lawsuit and the whole world just tunes into this honey trial. On the day of the trial, we get introduced to this lawyer, one of the main antagonists of the film, Lawyer Montgomery, who will be the defense attorney for the human race. Day 1, Barry presented the case of how bees were being abused. Day 2, Lawyer Montgomery baits Adam into stinging him, making them almost lose the case. Day 3, Barry got the idea of presenting the smoking gun to the court, one of nature's biggest enemies harming a lot of bees which made them want the case. So the bees slowly got all of their honey back, a little bit too much actually, which forced all the bees to retire which then causes all the plants and crops to die out. Barry and Vanessa feel guilty, Vanessa decides to go to California to see the Parade of Roses, and this is where Barry gets the idea to steal the flowers from there, fly it over to New York to make all the bees pollinate again. After an elaborate montage, they're finally at the plane, but the pilots announce that they might get delayed. Vanessa says the flowers might wilt by the time they get there. Barry, these are cut flowers with no water. Water. They'll never make it. Barry decides to talk to the pilots to reason with them. Apparently, these pilots never watched the bee trial, so they got shocked that the, a bee is talking to them. They freak out and they end up passing out. 
Barry calls Vanessa to the cockpit so that she can fly the plane. The command center learns all about this and news reporters begin flooding the scene. A bee reporter also reports about this and Barry makes a speech that motivates all the bees to start working again and they all flee outside the hive to help land the plane. Barry becomes a pollen jack and they all live happily ever after. Yeah, sure, the film doesn't have a compelling plot, but it was still simple and manageable enough to explain. Well, duh, you made it seem like it was a decent film the way you told it. What are you doing here? Uh, whatever. Before we get to the bad stuff, let me explain my case first. I want everyone to view this in the lens of a 7-year-old or a 10-year-old kid and see what made me love this film so much. For me, the world of the B-movie was a sight to behold. For a 2007 film, it was beautiful to look at. Not the humans, they definitely didn't age well. But the world inside the hive. The animation and design department really went all out on designing this place. They made the hive look like such a fun theme park and they totally could have made it in real life. If they made this film with today's technology, they would have made the honey look even more delicious. Outside the hive, they made the bees so fragile and small compared to the even bigger world of humans. I personally think the film succeeded in making you aware of that scale. To feel like a small bee in such a huge world of humans. Okay, yeah, woo, you found the colors pretty. Is that really the only thing you liked about this film? No, I, I definitely have a lot more to say about the film. There's only really like four or five notable characters in this film. Barry is your standard heroic type of character who just wanna do good in the world. His desire to be a pollen jock instead of settling with a job that he wouldn't be happy to do somehow resonates with me a lot and I don't know why. Adam is your standard best friend sidekick type of character and even if he and Barry had disagreements with each other, he was still with him until the end. Vanessa is a florist who seems to not really know what she's doing. Are we doing everything right, you know, legally? I'm a florist. I wish she had more of a personality. And she could have been more kind to Ken. Ken is actually the most normal person in this film, despite me hating him a lot as a kid. He's just an average guy who got cocked blocked by a bee. He represents what a lot of humans would act like if bees just started randomly talking out of nowhere. There's also another character in the film that tried to be an antagonist, Lawyer Montgomery. He may not have been that great of a lawyer, but he did warn Barry about messing around with the laws of nature and was really just trying to preserve what has been tradition on Earth for 27 million years. This is an unholy perversion of the balance of nature, Benson. You'll regret this. I have no idea why he didn't present that as a case, though. Maybe because this film is whack and it's a complete joke? I mean, yeah, the B-movie was a concept created by Jerry Seinfeld a comedian. A lot of people took this film way too seriously. As a kid, it really made me laugh. Because that's what it is, a kid's movie. It may have been filled with a bunch of bee puns that could be written by a 12 year old, but compared to the Emoji movie, I can say for certain that this film had a more compelling plot and even funnier than the Emoji movie. There were some adult jokes in the bee movie that I didn't get as a kid, but they were so funny when I rewatched them again. One of my favorite lines in the film is, This is your queen? That's a man in woman's clothes! That's a drag queen! Okay, it might seem dated and offensive for today's standards, but it definitely made air come out of my nose. There's also a line at the end of the film which was also great. You here, we'll be able to help you. Sorry I'm late! He's a lawyer too? Ma'am, I was already a blood-sucking parasite. All I needed was a briefcase. Okay, clearly you're not the guy who determines whether or not a film is funny or not. This film could have been responsible to why the quality of animated films has been degrading over the years. Oh please, there was already a lot of bad movies before the B-movie came out. Just be glad this film didn't ruin the reputation of some songs. This film had like two songs in it. It's nothing new that kids animated films would use popular songs for their films. People weren't happy that trolls used the song Clint Eastwood in their film. A bad film can ruin the reputation of a good song. Thankfully, the film only used two songs from pop culture, Here Comes the Sun and Sugar Honey Honey. And it's perfect because the scenes in which they were used were what I remember the most. Does that mean that one of my first exposure to the Beatles song was from this film? Maybe. Even if I have forever connected these songs to the B movie, there's nothing wrong with a younger generation getting exposed to old songs. I mean, the more chances these songs get exposure, the better. The same can be said with a certain social media app. Aside from the two songs, the other musical aspect I really liked about this film was the score. Rupert Gregson Williams did the score for this film. I'm no music expert, but that melody... Boom. has been stuck in my brain for years because of how catchy it is. This motif can be heard all over the film and I don't know how else to describe it other than it sounds like a bee. I'd love for someone to analyze why this music is so catchy. Like 
I don't know, describe it with half beats or tempos or melody or something. Someone didn't listen to music class. I'm so sorry to disappoint you, Sir Magnai. Okay, here's my last point as to why I really love this movie a lot. As much of a joke this movie was, it highlighted how important bees were to the world. It was eye-opening to me how much of an impact bees had. And I was just then. You're telling me that this bee that scared me while I was in class, singing the national anthem where my classmates laughed at me, this bee was important in saving the world? I guess when all of the bees eventually die or just decide to stop doing their work, humans have no chance. We're all doomed. Okay, there are a ton of other pollinators in the world. Crops and plants and flowers won't immediately die just because bees stop working. Well, bees are still in danger. They have slowly been endangered as the years go by. Good thing this girl from TikTok is one of the few people that still cares about bees. Look at her. I can't believe she can do that. We need to save the bees, people. You're not accepting the fact that there are a lot of things in this film that are very inaccurate. Male bees aren't workers or jocks. Male bees don't have stingers. Bees have six legs, not two. The bee movie lied to you. If they really wanted to deliver that message, they should have done more research about it. And you're avoiding one of the biggest issues in this film. Vanessa and Barry. Okay, people were weirded out by their relationship just because it's not as romantic as Beauty and the Beast. No, 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 no. People were weirded out by their relationship because it's between a human and a bee. There's a word for that called bestiality, aka sophilia. AKA Melisophilia, and even if that relationship was allowed in this world, they wouldn't even last long. Bees live up to like 30 to 60 days. Okay, yeah, yeah, look, Jerry Seinfeld was aware of that and even made a comment about it. And I apologize for what seems to be a certain uncomfortable, subtle sexual uh, aspect of the B movie. It really was not intentional. <laughs> After uh, it came out, I realized this is really not appropriate for children. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because no. the bee seemed to have a thing for the girl. Yeah. You know, and we don't really want to pursue that as an idea <laughs> in, in children's entertainment. He was aware that it was a bizarre idea and he never intended to put it out there. The idea of a bee in a human relationship. Are you secretly a furry? What? No, why would you even- You want to f a bee? No, no. This is why the internet gave the film a lot of sh Okay, yeah, they did, but the memes didn't really bother me that much anymore. I ended up loving the million ways they can twist this childhood film of mine into any way, shape, or form. This happened at the very height of meme remix videos. A time when We Are Number One dominated the internet. Rest in peace, Robbie Rotten. I think a lot of kids who grew up watching this film ended up realizing how disturbing it was when they grew up. And I was just one of those people that refused to see f for what this film truly is. I'm just glad another DreamWorks film has a good reputation on the internet right now. Because if I said that I loved the B-movie back in 2016, I would probably have gotten a death sentence. Stung to death by millions of bees. But hey, as time and time went by, a lot of people are coming out to say that they like the B-movie. It's a film that's so bad that you, you just have to love it. Like look, they even made a musical about it. So after all that, you still love this film. Well, the B-movie still holds a piece of my childhood heart, regardless of what the critics and haters would say. Is it a sign that I'm mentally ill? Probably. I can say for sure that it's definitely because of nostalgia. Yes, I like the B-movie. No, I don't want to bone a bee. This film definitely has a lot of issues that are far beyond defending. And it should be a film that should just stay in my childhood memories. Maybe if DreamWorks decide to renew the concept, maybe it could be better. But Jerry Seinfeld decided that he wasn't gonna make a sequel to this movie anyway. The world of the B movie still has a lot of promise. And with the eventual extinction of bees, there's no doubt that a new B movie gets to be made in the future. Maybe if Pixar produced the B movie, it would have been that bad. Pixar would make this a tear jerking journey about how bees are keeping humans alive. Maybe it's also good that Pixar didn't produce this film because of what Finding Nemo did. Watch the movie through the lens of a kid. Maybe you'll still find it as enjoyable as I did. But let it be known that I'm one of the brave ones to say. I love the B-movie. This video was sponsored by Honey. Just kidding, this channel isn't sponsored yet. Next time on the things the internet ruined for me, Fireflies. I hope I don't become known as the YouTuber who just likes the B-movie. Why not help me and comment down below what you liked about the B-movie. What are you even drawing? It's Nanya. Nanya what? Nanya business. If this somehow gets really popular, I'd like for Shafirlis to make a counterpoint to why this film sucks. I, I, I'd still watch that. He ranked it 17 in his DreamWorks video. It made the top 20.